Viking.com here with Reza Madadi. Reza, we wanted to talk to you about Nicholas Backstrom. Nicholas Backstrom, who is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about the first time you met Nicholas. When was it? When I first time met Nicholas Backstrom, it was back 2008 or 9, or 10, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Some, 8, I think. Maybe actually. 8, yeah. Uh, was a white skinny guy came to the Hilti and he said yeah I'm you know he has very funny accent so yeah I'm coming from north of Sweden I'm here for yeah training in May I want to be best blah blah and he said yeah sure let's go then from the beginning he started to show the a lot of heart and a lot of will. He, we said, whoa, this kid is funny. This kid really want this. And then, yeah, I remember he was, he didn't have a good situation. I want to be honest and say, didn't have any place to sleep. He didn't even have any clothes for training. That's true. And uh, they said when he was a will, it's a way, it's a way. So he's one of those guys, honestly show, if you really want something, you can make it. So now we are here, 7-0, and if two weeks he's gonna do his debut in UFC, awesome. Are you kind of, I mean, amazed that it's coming to this point? I don't know how many people move or come the all-stars or Hilti back yeah. in the day and says, I want to be an MMA fighter. Yeah. And usually you don't see them around that long. When did you know, like, Nicholas had the potential to fight on this level? Uh, honestly, when I saw it win, after sparring, this guy kicked his, sorry my language, ass kick, but he still want to keep going. Ah, let's go, let's go. I remember one day after three rounds sparring, I saw to, I was a little bit bully. <laughs> Bay, Niklas, I kid your ass. Ha <laughs> ha. Start to laugh. Then I went to the locker room and he came after me very angry. Sir, let's go. I said, okay, you want to fight again? Let's go. I'm ready for you outside. So he went outside. I changed my clothes, get to the shower, start the shower. <laughs> and he came back after 10 minutes and he's still standing for me outside. I'm waiting. And he always showed a lot of heart, a lot of will. So, you know, people, they see the goal, but they don't see the way to the goal, okay? After a few steps, they give up. But wow, it wasn't what I thought. It was very hard because you cannot, you need to, you cannot do a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? But it was different for Niklas. Yeah, uh, Pute told us this interesting story about your debut in the UFC where you actually gassed in the first round and really had nothing left going into the second round against yeah. the square. He told us, and we, I watched the video again, like he told you not to throw any punches, just relax and wait for your one takedown, which maybe you had energy for. Yeah. What kind of advice are you giving Nicholas under this type of situation? I know the media here is trying to hunt him down. He's got two weeks to get ready. What do you think he needs to focus on? Just go inside and have a fun. Because there's so many people around the world. They want to be in your shoes. They want to be in your situation. Uh, it's like you said. So many people, so many young kids, they moved, they go to the MMA club, they have a dreams to be a, become a UFC fighter, but you never see them, you never heard about them. And now you are here, Niklas. So just enjoy. Doesn't matter if you get knocked out or if you knock out your opponent. Just do your best and try to have a fun because now is your time. After a few years, five years, ten years, the time gonna pass. And you're gonna look you're gonna looking back and say, Wow, I missed that time. So it's only I can say. Stay there and feel the energy, feel the atmosphere and try to have a good fun.
Yeah. Great. Thanks, Reza. Thanks for your time. You're welcome, brother.